Hi. Since I uh, did not get the class recorded properly last time, I wanted to record a short video that went through some of the items from creating a database and showing that table inside of your application. So what I've done uh, is uh, taken uh, the uh, uh, AuthDB uh, project uh, that I have on uh, GitHub, and I've added a couple new commits to it. So if you look at uh, github.com slash Derek J slash off DB uh, and look at the commit table, uh, you can kind of ignore the uh, one moving to the new uh, Bluemix project chat DB demo. Um, that was something I was doing for class and didn't quite get done. But uh, then I'm moving to this new one that I'll leave up through the uh, rest of the week called DB example untangling. Uh, and I removed HTTP auth from uh, the uh, example project there. Now you're welcome to leave that in for your project if you want, uh, but that was really an exercise for one of the homeworks and you don't need to have authentication in this uh, project if you don't want to. And then finally, my uh, last commit in there, uh, creating a uh, simple t uh, DB uh, table output is the uh, one to really uh, focus on. <clears throat> so I'm gonna run that locally here with an NPM start and show you what it's doing and then we'll walk through the code. So same as the other uh, example in here, I've actually left the original code for uh, the uh, example uh, in on the uh, localhost 3000. But when I go to this uh, new uh, page I've defined, uh, localhost 3000 slash two, I see my uh, uh, table uh, with all of my uh, items in the cars that I've added. Uh, you'll remember this one uh, as uh, being where I added a car. Uh, let's uh, say, uh, oh, I don't know, I've got a Mazda. Uh, let's say, uh, a Tesla. And I'll add that one. And you'll notice that it adds the car uh, and we get a response back, but it doesn't actually show it here. So the implementation that I've shown you is the simplest implementation that you can get away with. Uh, and that is where you actually require a page refresh in order to uh, get the entire page listed. It's fine if you turn in your page this way. It's much better if you turn in your page so that updates show automatically. Yeah. Um, but uh, I wanted to make sure to get the uh, simplest case in here since that's what I'll accept for project three. And you can see that my Tesla pops in in here in the, uh, uh, the list now. So let's look at how this happens. I'll turn it off again for a minute here because I want to uh, start my uh, code editor window. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and start as usual with what's going on uh, in uh, the app.js side of things. So in app.js, I have taken a, uh, a, a couple of things uh, that uh, were uh, kind of modeled after what was previously happening uh, with the uh, favorites uh, uh, git root. Uh, recall uh, for implementing page two here, We've uh, uh, implemented app.get on two, and that passes into the index, and that goes to our HTML. We'll go down that path in just a minute. Uh, and uh, then uh, we've implemented previously a post route for adding new cars. I went through this in the last class where the recording was uh, uh, working well. So I won't go back through the uh, post route. But in order to create the list of cars on the web page, I've had to implement a get route. And so let's look at what this get route is uh, uh, providing. First of all, you'll notice that the uh, format of the git root uh, is uh, to uh, provide the path that we're uh, getting, so this API cars, uh, and uh, then uh, it, it provides a function that is implementing what it should do when this uh, it comes back. This is again uh, that uh, uh, promises or callbacks uh, style to handle asynchronicity, uh, since on a git root it's not going to come back just immediately. So let me show you what happens. Uh, it, we'll uh, npm start this again. Uh, and I'll show you what happens uh, when we uh, call that uh, API route for uh, Git uh, uh, API cars directly. You can see that we get back a, a list of the items from the database that include an ID, a name, and a value. And then attachments is left over from the old database. I didn't take that out. Uh, I should have, uh, uh, it's just extraneous at this point. 
but it's really just the uh, value that we'll use from this. And so you can see that this is the list of, uh, uh, of cars that we have in our uh, database. Let's see how those are actually uh, getting pulled out of the uh, database. So I'm just doing a console log to uh, get the cars. Uh, that uh, is uh, going to be showing up here. Uh, here you see get cars. Uh, yeah, that's that uh, your route being called. Uh, and um, then I'm creating an empty list for uh, the cars to uh, yeah, fit in. And then just a counter variable i. I'm using DB2 because that's my simple database, uh, not the sample from uh, the favorites. Uh, and uh, so uh, I'm calling the list function on uh, DB2. Uh, this is basically a way of listing everything that was in the uh, database. Now you actually will need to uh, do something slightly different to uh, do a query out of there. Uh, but uh, again, I wanted this to be the simplest example that you could follow. Uh, and so I've not done a uh, direct query here. Um, if there's not an error, i.e. if this function comes back with a uh, body and not an error, uh, then I want uh, to uh, go ahead and define the length as the number of rows in this body message, which is the return result from my database. And then I'm going to uh, log that on the console as the number of cars. So here, total number of cars, six. If more than one has come back, then we'll go ahead uh, and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, this section is if none have come back, if nothing, uh, yeah, no cars are through, then we know that we actually have to create the database. Uh, and so here's where we give it a doc name, give it a description, uh, and insert the uh, first item here uh, for it to have uh, something in the database. So let's ignore that one for right now uh, and uh, go directly onto the path where there is something in the database, since that's the one that I wanted to uh, actually describe more fully here. Uh, and uh, the only reason the other path is in there uh, is in case you bring the database up without having first pushed something into it. Uh, so if you already have something in your database and you've manually entered it, uh, feel free to take this whole block out. Uh, it's error checking code that really should be there for a complete robust application, uh, um, but it's not absolutely necessary to make it work. <laughs> and so uh, we'll be in the else clause so that uh, if uh, you know, length is not zero, meaning we did get some number of cars returned and we know we did because we just looked and saw length equal to six in our console log. So the first thing that we're gonna do uh, is uh, uh, do a uh, body.rows for each. This is a looping construct uh, uh, that is going to uh, loop through each individual item in our body. And so for each one of those items, uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, using the document ID, uh, do a get call to the database. And that get call to the database is going to, uh, again, using this uh, uh, callback uh, uh, function, uh, um, which is an anonymous function that we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, so I don't give this a name. I just have this function is what's getting called when the database returns with its results. And if there's not an error, then its results are going to uh, consist of creating this response data variable with the ID, the name, and the value for each of the items that uh, are in the, uh, the database. And then I'm gonna push this onto the car list. Remember the car list is uh, that uh, thing that I uh, created an empty uh, uh, variable for up here. And so it's just a uh, list of objects and it can take as many as the uh, database is returning. And so the car list is gonna get a push. We're gonna increment uh, a, a, our counter variable. Uh, and uh, finally, if uh, um, I is greater than the length, meaning if we have incremented uh, so many times that uh, um, <clears throat> we've gotten all the items out of here, then we'll go ahead and write these out as the response to the uh, query. Remember, all of this is coming about because uh, we've asked uh, for uh, a uh, get root, and this get root has both a request and a response. And at some point, we have to do a response write with what the answer to that is, or a response render like we've done in the case of the other get roots uh, to actually give it a page. But we don't have an HTML page to give at this point. This is just a, uh, a, a root that is giving us some data. And so the ending of this root that gives us some data is not HTML, but it's rather JSON. And so this response right, JSON stringify car list, is how we're sending the stringed version of the uh, list of cars back out as a response. And then we're ending the response. So you can see this. Uh, in the console log output from uh, NPM, that we've gone and gotten the cars, that's the starting. We talked through the uh, total number of cars is six, 
And then finally, we have the console log for ending response. And then we have response.end, which actually finishes the uh, response, uh, so that we're not writing anything more on the, uh, the output, and we can exit the function. A little bit of error checking. If uh, this route doesn't work, there's a console log for an error. If uh, this database query didn't uh, work, there's a console log for an error. Uh, but the functional route that should get hit if everything goes right has just been described. So that is sufficient to actually get cars out of the database. And if we're getting cars out of the database, we have something that we can work with. But this doesn't actually describe how those cars are being uh, set up to uh, look at uh, the, uh, uh, or to uh, fill the list of things on the, uh, uh, the web page. So let's now look at how that is done. Can I come uh, back to uh, the app.js here? And let's start this path from right here where we say app.get2 and go to roots index2. So let's go to roots index2 now, or roots index, and find index2. And that is our index2. Um, and so this is uh, rendering index2.html and also passing through that user variable that we needed uh, for the footer previously, but uh, that's not relevant to this discussion. So now let's go to index2.html and see what it's doing. And this is largely the same as it was, uh, with the exception of uh, I've added a uh, div for the loading image and I've added a table for the cars to show up in. And let me actually show you what the loading image looks like uh, if uh, we have uh, no cars added uh, or if it's not getting anything back from the, uh, the database. Uh, so uh, in order to uh, do that, uh, we'll notice that this is calling to index2.js uh, and util.js. Uh, and so index2.js is the one that has uh, the uh, new stuff that we need. And right at the end of uh, index2.js, uh, I've got this load items call. And so if I don't load any items, if I comment load items out, and save that, and we'll stop this. And we'll restart this so it picks up that new change. There we go. And now I will refresh this. So you can see I'm loading data, but I never actually call load items. And so I continue to have this GIF image here uh, with this loading image. This is something you may want to do if any of your calls are taking time and you want your user to uh, again know that something is happening in the background. Of course, in this case, nothing actually is happening in the background uh, because uh, I'm not ever uh, loading things. So I'm going to go ahead and save that again. And we'll come back here and we'll uh, start this again. And when that is started, I'll go ahead and refresh that. And again, I get my cars rather than my loading image. Hey, where did my uh, code go? Perhaps I saved and exited. Sorry. Okay, so the next thing we're going to uh, do in here uh, is uh, uh, you remember we were uh, in here in um, index2.js, uh, and uh, I want to show you the new code that I've added. Uh, um, I've added back in uh, the uh, load items, uh, and so all of these in this index2.js are just function definitions. Uh, yeah, so uh, what happens when this gets loaded from the HTML is that I uh, declare these variables, then I declare a whole bunch of functions, and nothing actually happens because the functions aren't executed. Uh, and so the first place the functions are executed is right at the bottom of this file, where I say show loading message and then load items. On show loading message, all I'm doing is console logging loading and then I'm uh, doing a document get element by ID and saying loading data and loading that uh, image. And so uh, when uh, I commented out load items, nothing else was happening in here. 
When I do have uh, load items in here though, the next place it goes is in here into load items. And then it does this XHR get. This is using the utility library yeah, and the REST data, which is our API cars, to pass an HTML, or HTTP get to request uh, to uh, API cars, which of course is gonna be picked up by the uh, uh, app.js uh, route we just looked at. Uh, and we'll return a list of cars in this format, uh, which is JSON, uh, stringified JSON right here. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do when we get data back from this is we're gonna stop showing the uh, uh, loading message. I'm actually console logging the data just because during the debug process I wanted to see that. And so if you have your developer console open, you can actually see these items uh, in the developer console as well. And that'll help you give it an idea that you're actually getting useful information back from your database and all the fields that you expect to be getting. Next, what I'm doing is uh, creating a uh, received items variable, which either has the uh, data or has an empty set in here. Uh, and this just protects against the set uh, the state uh, where I don't uh, get anything back and I would like to have something defined. Uh, um, and uh, so uh, this allows me in the next item or in the next uh, line here, uh, to start a loop through the received items. And so uh, if I have no received items, this isn't gonna do anything, but if I do have received items, then for each received item, I'm gonna make sure that it's uh, in the correct format uh, and uh, that it has both uh, the item defined and that there's an ID within that, that item. If there is, I'm going to push it to my items list. And my items list is what I'm actually going to use to populate the uh, table on the uh, web page. So here, I I say if I uh, have an items uh, yeah, list, if items dot list uh, your items dot length is greater than zero, then I have items. If I don't have items, then I'm just going to set items to a, a, to an empty list. But assuming I do have items, then I'm going to iterate through each of these items and add each of these items, which requires me to go up to add item. In add item here, I'm going to be declaring a variable row, which is a document dot create element table row. This is just uh, in the document creating a row that we can then later add to our table. And this is the table cars that we've defined in the HTML. I'm giving it a table rows class name and uh, then I'm uh, setting an ID and uh, then for the ID I'm uh, setting an attribute data ID. Now this isn't absolutely essential for uh, the simplest implementation which is what I said I was going to give you here. Uh, but this is essential if you later want to be able to delete items out of your table. But, and so I've left it in there uh, as an example for how you tag and track the items that you're putting in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, yeah, give my uh, inner HTML for that row. This is just a, uh, a, a, a document uh, element because uh, I've created it here. And so it has an inner HTML property, uh, which actually holds the HTML for that row item. And I'm going to be uh, creating uh, a, 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 an item in the uh, row uh, with the item value that we have. And this value, uh, if uh, you'll recall uh, in here, uh, item.value is like Tesla or Honda or Chevy or all the different names that we've given our cars. And then for that table row, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the table that it's going into. So variable table equals document.get element by ID cars. And then I'm simply going to append that last row. And so that's it. Um, that's how you add uh, tables from the database uh, or uh, items from the database uh, into a table on your HTML page row by row. And it's not uh, the most elegant solution. You do have to do a refresh to pick up new things, uh, but uh, it's one that, uh, yeah, that works. And I think you ought to be able to extend from there uh, to uh, see how to do this in your application. Please hop on the Slack channel if you have any questions uh, and uh, let me know how it's going. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.